So good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you're tuning in from. Uh, my name is Darby O'Brien. I am a customer success manager in state and local government. And like Asaita said, today I'm going to be covering the in the meeting process as well as some of those pre settings and some best practices while you're in there. So I'm going to go ahead and share out my screen here and let's get started. So here I am just sharing out a, a demo tenant, but kind of referring back to what we learned last week. We talked about the pre meeting, setting up all the places you can schedule and how to kind of set yourself up for success in the meeting. So today what I want to show you are some best practices right before hopping into that that meeting, um, some different ways to hop in, some settings to consider, and then we will poke around with all of the fun tips and tricks that you have within the meeting. So first and foremost, what I want to point out to you is how you can actually access your meeting and the information within your meeting before it ever begins. So I know that right now with a lot of us tuning in virtually, there's a lot of meeting fatigue. We are jumping from call to call. So the best way to set yourself up for success um, with the meeting Meeting that you have scheduled. So right here, I'm going to click on this meeting that I have scheduled for Friday at 1130. Um, we're a couple days out and I'm the organizer here, so I'm just going to double click into this. When I do that, I see that at the top of my screen here, I have some access into some tabs. This is a great way to set yourself up for success before the meeting even starts. So once you have scheduled a meeting, you actually have access to the chat, the files, and the meeting notes. This is a really, really good way to set your expectations for the call. Maybe drop the PowerPoint or the Excel document or whatever it may be that you're going to be working on in the call. Set the agenda and get everyone on the same page before the call even begins. So to give you an example of what this might look like, you know, maybe I would grab an agenda here and hop into my meeting notes. And share this with the team. Let's grab this again. So I could come in here and add agenda, lines, et cetera, right? So we could come in here and set the scene. What are we gonna cover? What are we gonna talk about today? I could also come in here into the chat and maybe set my expectations for this meeting. You know, do I want cameras to be on? Are we gonna be recording? Is this gonna be interactive? Do I wanna save questions till the end? Right, it's a really nice way to give everyone on the call a heads up for how you want this call to be run and what they can expect from this meeting. And then of course, in your files section here, we could go ahead and upload that document that you might be working on or maybe the slides that you're going to be referring to. Again, it's just a really good way to get everyone up to speed before the call even begins. So that way you don't waste time doing that in the meeting. So I'll go ahead and close out of this here. All right, so the other thing I want to show you uh, pre meeting is how to join a call inside of Teams as well as inside of Outlook. So while joining from Teams seems pretty straightforward, so I'm going to start with Outlook here just to share something you might see and how to address it from there. So here I just hopped into my Outlook app and I see a Teams meeting here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the join link and show you what it looks like to join right here from Outlook. Perfect. So what this did is it launched in a web browser here. So this might look familiar. This may have happened to you before. I can see in this pop up here, it knows I have Teams downloaded and so it's prompting me to open the app. So that's what I would recommend to take your Teams meeting on the Teams app if you can. But you also have some options here. So you also also, again, have that option to open it right in the app here or on the browser. So my recommendation is when you see this screen and you've got Teams downloaded to either open it with this pop up or open on the Teams app. The Teams app is just going to have the most up to date features, all the best bells and whistles. You could certainly join on the browser. If you're on a device that does not have the Teams app downloaded, you're still going to be able to attend the meeting all the same, just might have a little less functionality. 
So just wanted to call that out because this is popular. Sometimes this screen comes up and we think, OK, what do we do next? So no stress, just join via the app there. I'll hop back into Teams here. All right. The other thing that you may want to review as a meeting organizer before hopping into your meeting is your meeting options. And I'm just going to quickly show this to you. I think this may have been reviewed last week, but you can also adjust these mid meeting. So I just want to call this out. You can adjust it before the meeting starts and while the meeting is in session. So where you'll find this is you've actually got a little meeting options button here and you do need to be the meeting organizer to adjust these. Also, you're going to see it in the join link down here. Um, you're also going to see that in Outlook so you can access it from a few places. I am just going to use this button here. All right, when I click on that, that opens my meeting options. Your meeting options are a way for you to set options or set settings for your meeting on a per meeting basis. So if you want to change the lobby settings for a particular meeting, um, or if you want to set certain presenters for your particular meeting, then you can come in here and make those adjustments. Like I said, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on these um, once we're inside of the meeting because you can access them from there as well, but just wanted to call that out. Awesome. So let's go ahead and hop into a call. So I'm going to join this team sync here. Actually, I'm going to join this one right above it. And I'm going to select my join button. And hop in. So first and foremost, the first thing that's going to come up here is your meeting, your pre meeting screen. So at this point in time, no one can see you. No one can hear you. All you are doing is deciding how you would like to join the meeting. So this is a good time to decide. Do I want to join with my camera on? Do I want to go ahead and join muted? And maybe to uh, check out some of your device settings. So as a best practice, if you're joining a pretty large meeting, I would recommend joining on mute. Um, it's just a safe way to join. You're not sure if the conversation has begun yet or if you're going to be interrupting anyone and you don't want to contribute any background noise. So that's a great way to hop into a call. The other thing I want to point out here is this little gear icon. It's a well hidden feature and this is going to open your device settings. So if you are someone that sometimes uses a Bluetooth headset and sometimes doesn't, or sometimes uses a different speaker in your room and sometimes doesn't, this is likely a spot you're going to want to check out before you facilitate a Teams meeting. Ultimately, you just want to come in here and make sure that everything is hooked up where you think it's hooked up. Um, nine times out of 10 when I get a request for, you know, my microphone was working yesterday, but it's not working today. This is the absolute first place that I recommend everyone go check. You just want to make sure that that mic is hooked up to your laptop or the device that you want it to be hooked up to and not a different one in the room. You can adjust these settings mid meeting. So if you lose your audio mid call again, this is the first place I would recommend checking. All right, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and hop into the meeting with join now. All right, I see Diego is already in the meeting waiting for me. Perfect. So let's take a look here. I want to point out one best practice before we hop into all of these fun settings, um, and that's here in the chat. So meeting chat is pretty straightforward, right? This is a great spot to collaborate back and forth, have those side conversations mid meeting, you know, send documents or files or links that could contribute to what the speaker is talking about. Out, but it's also a good way to check in and get some interaction in your meetings. So I realize this um, doesn't work for every single call that there is, but there are some great use cases out there, especially for an internal call. But a great way to just kickstart some interaction in your meeting is to get people talking in the chat. Like I said, we're on a lot of meetings all day. It is very hard to not multitask on meetings if you're not directly engaged. So go ahead and engage your your audience. A few ways that we do this internally is we come into the chat here and we ask for a two word check in 
or maybe to send an emoji that best describes how you're feeling right now or a GIF, right? Just a fun way to get everyone in the chat talking to each other, and then that helps them stay engaged on the call. So that's just a quick pro tip for you before I click through some of these settings here. Um, again, like I said, it doesn't work for every single call, but for those internal calls, it's worth a shot. I would recommend you try. Awesome. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to click through all of these fun features that we have here at the top. Uh, what I'm going to focus on is truly where they live, what they do and why. And then I'm going to pass it over to Ambrosia, who's going to bring these to life more with some use cases, um, focus on you know, how they could be used in different situations or scenarios. And then we'll kick it over to Bridget for all of the sharing and collaborating. Awesome. So I'm just going to go right down the line here and we can start with participants. So here in your participants tab is where you can see everyone that is in your meeting, as well as some others who may have been invited. Um, we could see here what their response was. So in this case, no response from Jordan and Joni. They're not real people, so we're going to let it slide. But if you know, we could see if they had accepted or declined the call or maybe they tentatively accepted. We could also request them to join the call at any time. This will call them in. I'll go ahead and call in Jordan just to see. And it's going to ring out to that person and ask them to join the call. Jordan did not answer. Like I said, he's not real, so it's OK. But what we can also see here are the attendees that actually are in our call. And when we hover over their name, we see an ellipses appear. So my top team's tip is any time you see one of these ellipses in the Teams platform is to check it out. Um, they are always called the more options ellipses, but they always have great features in them, and it is 100% worth clicking on all of the ellipses that you see just to see what lives inside. So in this case, when I click on the ellipses next to a participant on my meeting, I have the ability to mute them. Deborah is already muted. I could pin or spotlight them, make them an attendee, or remove them from the meeting. So let's talk through what some of these mean. So if you have ever played around with pin and spotlight, you may have noticed that they feel pretty similar. But let's go ahead and pin Deborah and take a look. So when you pin someone in Teams, it's going to make them the full screen only for yourself. A really easy way to remember that is pinning is personal, right? Just for your screen. Now, spotlighting, on the other hand, I'll unpin Deborah here. Spotlighting will make that person the main screen, the focus of the screen for everyone in the meeting. So you'll get a pop up here. We're going to highlight this video for everyone in the meeting. And I will spot it. So now this is for everyone in the call. Deborah has been made full screen, not just myself. This is a great uh, best practice if you've got a speaker or a certain presenter, go ahead and make them spotlighted so they take up the whole screen. So that way it's not distracting with everyone else's video on the screen and we all are focusing on the same person. I will stop spotlighting. The last option I had there was to make Deborah an attendee. So you can um, make people attendees in your meeting. And what that does is it just takes a little bit more of the control out of it for that person. So um, when you make someone an attendee, they won't be able to mute others, kick others out of the meeting. You'll have the ability to hard mute that person if you need to. So it's just a little less control in the meeting. It can make a lot of sense if you're facilitating a pretty large meeting to have some users be attendees. So you have a little bit more control over the environment. And then, of course, remove the meeting will kick Deborah out of the call. A couple other settings here we have in the participant pane. Uh, you have the ability to share your invite right from here. I think this is a commonly overlooked feature, but just by clicking on that, I can copy the meeting link. And then I could go paste this somewhere. So um, a very common use case is someone starts pinging you that they can't find the invite to the call they're supposed to be on. You're already in the call, but now you're scrambling to try and forward them the invite. 
you don't need to do that. You can just come in here, copy that invite, paste it to them in chat, and they're going to be able to hop in very easily. And then the last few things here at the top, we could always invite someone into the call uh, by starting to type their name or dialing their phone number and call them in. And then, of course, we have another beloved ellipses here. So, of course, I'm going to click on it and see what's in there. And here is a spot where I can manage my meeting permissions and download the attendance list. So if I click on those meeting permissions, that's again going to open my meeting options and I can adjust this mid call. And of course, if I select download my attendance list, it's going to download an attendance file for me to review. So uh, that is what we've got in the participants pane. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to chat. Like I said, chat is pretty straightforward. It's a great spot to gain some interaction in your meetings, to ask questions, to send polls, and get people communicating in the chat section. So in this case, it looks like we've added Polly, which is some of our meeting extensibility. You'll notice down here at the type a new message bar, this should look very, very similar to the exact message bar that you see in Teams chat and in um, the Teams section of your Teams. So all of the same ribbon is really communicated through the entire platform. So you'll always have access to your formatting, um, to attach documents, to attach GIFs, emojis, stickers, etc. So they did a really nice job keeping that piece of the platform consistent. But like I said, chat's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to our next one here, which is the um, your reactions in the call. So first, this was just the raise hand functionality, but we have since ex extended upon that to some other reactions. Again, this is a really fun way to get some interaction in your call, especially when you're on a really large call, to have pe people react to good news or to a good presentation instead of coming off of mute and interrupting. And um, you've also got, of course, your raise hand. So if Deborah or Diego would like to raise their hands, we can see what that looks like. There we go. So when Deborah raises her hand, I can see that she's highlighted in gold here. She has got a hand icon next to her name. There goes Diego. And I also see a notification here in my participants window. So when I click on that, I can see who in my call has their hand up, and they're also in the order that the hand was raised. So if you are facilitating a large meeting, that is a great way to go about question and answer. You know the order that the hand was raised. You can call on people down the list and address questions. The other thing that you can do when someone's hand is up, very, very commonly with the raise hand feature, people tend to forget to put their hand back down. So in this case, if Diego had forgotten to put his hand down, I could hover over his name, click on that ellipses, and I can lower his hand for him. So again, another great meeting facilitation tip. You can lower the hands of others, keep a really nice clean list of whose questions have been answered, who needs to still ask. The other things we noticed there were just some reactions. So like I said, this is a really great way to have some interaction in a meeting that's still quiet um, and not super distracting. So if Diego and Deborah would like to add some reactions here. You can see what those look like. Let's see if they come in. So essentially what it's going to do is pop up over their name um, and whatever reaction they have selected will animate across them. This is really fun when you're in very large calls you know, 50, 100, 200 people, um, and people are reacting. It's really fun. They pop up all across the bottom of the screen, and it's just a really nice way to get a pulse check of how the audience is feeling. The next icon that we have here is our breakout rooms. So let's kind of poke around into this. First and foremost with breakout rooms, you're going to notice that you only see this icon here, this little square when you are the organizer of the meeting. 
So if you have noticed, you know, sometimes I see that, sometimes I don't. That's ex exactly why you've got to be the organizer. The other thing that I will tell you is you do need to be in the new meeting experience, meaning uh, your icons will be up here in the top right. If this is what your team screen looks like, you're good to go. If you notice that your icons are typically down here in the middle bottom, you may be in the old meeting experience or accessing teams on the web. So you will not have access to breakout rooms until you switch to the new meeting experience or you switch from your web browser to the desktop client. So if we click into breakout rooms here, what's first and foremost going to pop up is our breakout room card. This is where we can go ahead and select the number of rooms we want to create and how we want to divide our audience into those rooms. So you've got up to 50 rooms to choose from here. And I will go ahead and select just one room for now. And then your choices are either to automatically assign people to rooms that's going to assign people based on the number of users in your call so if you had 20 people in a call in two rooms it would put 10 in each right or you can manually decide how to put people in those rooms so again if you are choosing to divide people up by job title or by department maybe you want to hand select who goes in what room if you're trying to do it truly random you might want to select automatic all in all, you can adjust this to your heart's content once we create the rooms. None of this is set in stone. This is just to save you some time from the start, but don't get too caught up in the settings. All of them are changeable once you create the rooms. So once I hit create rooms here, I have a new side pane here with my breakout rooms. So, so I only created one room and it went ahead and auto added Deborah and Diego. If I hover over that room, I see another ellipses here. So I'm of course going to click into it and I see some more settings. I can open this room individually. A big one here is I can rename this room. I could close the room if it were open and I could delete the room altogether. So if I want to go ahead and rename this. Just like that. If I had other participants in my call or maybe some that joined late, they'll get added to this participant drop down and I can just continue to assign them to rooms from here. Breakout rooms are great. There's endless amounts of use cases for them and there are some fun settings to consider. But essentially what it's going to do is push these teams out into their own meeting room. Uh, the settings are almost identical to a regular Teams meeting. The main thing you're going to notice is they do not have the ability to call others into the meeting. That's because they're in a breakout room, so that kind of defeats the purpose of a breakout room. Um, but that's really the only feature that I have noticed that does not exist in your breakout rooms. The other thing you might want to consider with breakout rooms, um, again, is this ellipses next to the breakout room name. This is where you can reshuffle your rooms, make an announcement to all of the rooms. That's going to blast a message to every room you have open and adjust your room settings. So what you'll notice by default is it's automatically going to push users out into their room and then it's only going to let them return when you allow them to return. If I flip flop these, it's the exact opposite. So that means that they can join the room when they'd like and they can return to the meeting whenever they'd like. So that's completely, I think, a use case decision. If you do not want your attendees to be able to rejoin the main meeting until you say so, then you might want to leave this as is. If it's a working session and you want people to jump in back and forth, then you might want to flip flop these. I'm going to go ahead and skip our little poly icon here for Bridget to cover later. And let's take a look into our more actions. So these more actions here in another ellipse break up into some clean sections. So first and foremost, you have more settings and options here. So this is where you can adjust your device settings mid call. 
this is that little gear icon I showed you uh, right in the pre meeting join screen. So again, if you all of a sudden lose speaker or audio, come in here and just check these first. Your next one is your meeting options. Like I said, you can adjust these mid call. This is where it sent us to that web page before the call started. But again, I can decide my lobby settings on a per meeting basis. I can decide who can present in my call. If you call out specific presenters, then by default it's going to make everyone else in your call an attendee, which again gives you some more control over your call. Uh, for example, you can hard mute your attendees and you can change this mid call. So an excellent use case for that is if you are on a large meeting with a presenter, you do not want any interruptions. Go ahead and hard mute your attendees while that person is presenting and then come in here and unhard mute them when it's time for Q&A. That is an excellent way to uh, reduce any distractions in a presentation. You've also got access to your meeting notes here, um, which is where we pasted the agenda earlier and your meeting info. So this is going to again give you the copy join info. Maybe any details that were included in the email could show up here, um, but essentially it's your join information. Your next three settings here are how people will appear on your screen. So default, it's always going to be this gallery mode. And then you have some other fun options here. Um, we have the large gallery, which is more cameras on the screen. I believe it's seven by seven. Um, so it says here it's in preview. It's not in preview. Really, the only thing that you will need to turn it on is at least nine people with their video on at once. So once people have turned on their video cameras, this will come out of that that dark gray and you'll be able to select that option. Exactly the same thing with together mode here. You just need at least five or more people with their video on and you'll be able to select together mode. It's really fun. Um, it kind of puts everyone into like this lecture hall feel with a bunch of talking heads um, and it takes out the distraction of what's going on behind everyone in their video feed. And then some last few settings here. You can have the meeting call you to dial out to you. You can turn on live captions and this is where you would start your recording. The very last thing I'll show you is to turn off incoming video. This is a huge bandwidth saver, so if you are noticing some lag in your team's videos, this is the first place I come. If a lot of people on your call have their video on, you can come in here to turn it off and it will kind of revert back to their initials or their profile pictures um, and it takes away some distraction too. Hey Darby. Hey Darby. Yeah. This is Laura. I just have a quick question from the crowd that I thought might be um, just nice to reiterate here in the in live. Um, what is the difference between in a call, in a meeting or on the phone status? Good question. So a meeting is defined by at least three people in the team's meeting together. A team's call could be one on one or actually through the call functionality or the calls tab in your team's tenant. So right now we would be in a meeting. But if I called someone here through my calls tab, that would be a call. Or if I called one other person here through chat. You know, maybe I was chatting with Joni and we realized oh, we just need to hop on a call and have this conversation and I hit this call icon just because it's the two of us. It'll be a call. If we called in a third person, it turns into a meeting. Is that helpful? That sounds great. I think she, the person said there is a on the phone status as well. I'm not sure that I've seen that, but is that also another option? I think maybe so. yeah, I think you'll have either in a call or in a meeting as when your presence is read down here. Right. Perfect. Thanks for the answer. Yeah. Right. The last few settings here before I switch gears and hand things over to Ambrosia are pretty obvious. So we've got our video in our microphone icons. So that's where you can access your video feed or your mic to mute yourself or unmute yourself. You have your share screen. I'm going to save this for Bridget here, but this is how you share content at a meeting. 
And then finally, we have our big red weave button, uh, but there's actually a drop down next to that. So you've got two options here. You can leave the call yourself, or as the organizer, you can end the meeting. So this is very helpful if you have ever noticed um, hosting a large meeting that people like to kind of linger in the call for a couple hours or a day after the call has ended. You can easily fix that by just hopping in here and select end meeting. That kicks everyone out of the call at the exact same time. So that way you don't have any of those people kind of lingering in the call. And that is what I have for you for your in the meeting settings. Like I said, I just wanted to show you all the options you have and what they do and why. I would highly encourage you to just hop into a meeting with some colleagues or alone and play around and poke around with these settings just to kind of see how they feel. I think that's the biggest step back with the meeting is no one ever wants to play with meeting settings when you're in an actual meeting. So set aside some time to come in here and play around and see what they do um, and kind of brainstorm how you could utilize those features. But with that, I'm going to pass it to Ambrosia and I think we're going to take a quick break here. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Darby. You did exceptional. Um, so we are a little bit ahead of schedule, so I don't know if we want to take a pause and answer any questions that were lingering in the Q&A first and then walk through those um, before we start at the top of the hour for the next session. Um, I, can give you a, a, I can give you a question from the Q&A that kind of ties back to the status that we were talking about as well. Um, on the call me feature, um, how is that best used? The call me feature. So that's a great way to use if you a don't have audio connected to your computer and you want the device to call the audio to you. Uh, that's the best way I have seen it used. Does anyone have anything to add in there? I would just say for myself, going back to the meeting invite and finding the phone number to call is more difficult than having the meeting call me. <laughs> so um, I use that when, like you said, um, I need to be on audio, like for I'll take the call from my cell phone instead of being able to watch the, the video. But yeah, that's a that's a great point. That's Somebody exactly else? why I've seen it used as well, Laura. That's a great mm -hmm. point. Those on the on the road traveling and maybe need to just switch to their cell phone. Don't want to dial in. Well, and the last thing I'll say too, especially with uh, I'm in the Texas area with an ice storm that you might have heard of. Um, when internet was feeble or just fragile, um, being able to call in is a PSTN connection, so it's a more reliable. It's not an internet-based connection. It will actually physically call you using the good old-fashioned copper phone wire so um which may not be fiber anymore but i mean copper but my point is um that is that can help you in a, a situation where you either don't have internet or you do have uh you know difficulties with good internet um i'm also seeing let me see ah you know what so one of our one of our uh participants is asking if the organizer would need to have a Microsoft audio license. Um, so to publish, so go ahead. Do you guys want to address that? Sorry. <laughs> I no, don't answer. Um, well, I was just going to say, actually, right now we're in a period where there is a, a conferencing license that is a, a promotion for most of our larger customers. But the conferencing function on a Teams meeting, you'll know if you have it or not when you create a Teams meeting and it publishes a phone number by itself automatically. It'll generate a unique number for each meeting. If you don't have that in your profile, it can just be a matter of your IT administrator assigning you a license, which most of our customers have bought some quantity of licenses to be able to add that to your uh, profile. Um, and right now we're encouraging most people to use all those licenses because they're very affordable and, and they do address these issues of poor internet and poor connectivity. So it's more of an inclusion uh, theme than, um, you know, just another way to connect. But um, yes, thank you for that prompt. You do need to have a phone number, uh, you know, assigned to your team's meeting in order for people to use it to call and to be called. Um, one last question, and I won't answer this one, is call me the same as dial out option. 
So dialing out from here is typically used to dial someone else into the meeting. Is that what you're referring to? I believe so. OK, so I would use this dial out to line to dial anyone else into the meeting via either their phone number or maybe if they're inside of your organization, all you've got to do is start typing their name and that's going to call them in. The call me again and that's going to connect the audio to the device that you have it call. So you would enter your phone number here and then the meeting would call you so you can hear audio. And then on that same topic, um, Darby, where you were showing where you can put a phone number, mm -hmm. um, we had another question about how can I add my colleagues to this meeting? So if you want to just reinforce that on the, the adding people to the meeting during the meeting. Yeah, so you could come in here and call them directly if you know that they're available and maybe you just didn't get the invite out to them. I would recommend just coming here and typing their name. Who else is in this tonight? And I could just dial them in just like that. So I can see it is calling Bob and if he was available, he could connect and jump right into the call. Great. And just one last uh, aspect of that. If they are in time in your organization, you just want to add them via email. You can also do that. Um, and if they're not in your organization, I believe you can still send external emails as well. Can't you during the meeting? Um, with invite people. Yes. So here from participant. the calendar, if I wanted to add someone to our call, click into a meeting I scheduled. I can come in here and adjust this invite at any time. It's not set in stone, so I could come in here and add others within my organization. And I could also type out the email of external users. It will still add them here. I realize sometimes that's a preferred to do it in Outlook because it will remember their entire email address, but you can do it here in Teams by just typing that person's email and it will send them an invite just the same. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Let me check one more thing. Hey, Laura and um, Darby, <clears throat> I think it might be a great time to also mention uh, training opportunities that we have through our Microsoft Hub Teams as well. I see a lot of comments about how this is wonderful for GCC. Um, and how a lot of people are requesting this after. Um, so Darby, if you want to give a brief promo of GCC training that we have available after this too, I think it'd be a great time to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. So we do have some free training offerings offered through our Microsoft Store team, which is traditionally the actual brick and mortar Microsoft stores that you probably saw in a mall. Um, and they have all transitioned to virtual to help with training. So um, reach out to your CSM if you wanna get some training scheduled. They cover a lot of things in O365, Teams being one of them, and they'll even break out into different topics in Teams. So there's a beginner session, there's intermediate, there's one all about Teams calls, all about apps in Teams. So um, really any way you slice it, it's really customizable. They do a really nice job and you can get them on the calendar for your entire organization. I don't know if you had anything to add there, Bridget. No, I think that's awesome. And I saw a comment too about it being in GCC. So many of our stores also have GCC demo um, availability. So they will use a GCC demo tenant just like we are using now. Um, we understand that that is super important as you go out to educate your users. So I would say kind of the biggest pro of that program is it's customizable. Um, and they can demo it from a government aspect for you. Um, I well, I'll see for mine, Darby, if I can pull up um, one of the offering sheets um, when we transfer over to mine so that we can dive a little bit deeper into that as well. But that is all I have. Awesome. Hey, Bridget. Also, just as FYI, we do have um, session three covering resources as well. So if you just want to share awesome. the link, that's good. Yeah, OK. Related to just finding some quick trainings inside of Teams, you all have access to this help button here in the bottom left corner of your Teams client. It's really commonly overlooked. I think it just kind of looks like a support button. Um, but if you click on that, there are some great trainings in here and some great topics. So if I hit trainings, this gives me quick one minute, 30 second videos on how to do things here in Teams. Everything I talked about today is covered somewhere in here. 
I realized that when you just Google things about Teams or look on YouTube, you've got a 30 minute video for that 30 seconds of information that you're looking for. So I would check here first. There's some great quick tips here. Awesome, ladies. Do we see any other questions or anything before we switch over to the next session? I do have a quick question on how do you clear the activity and chat on the left? Why would you clear them or not? I think so that's just a general team's question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your activity feed here is going to fill up as you get notifications here in Teams. I don't think think that there's any way to clear out those notifications. Correct me if I'm wrong. They just kind of build and they get kind of pushed out as they fill, but you can filter them to what's most relevant to you. Um, so by clicking those three lines there, I can either type to filter or again, another ellipses here. You have some preset options. Uh, so for example, I really like filtering to unread messages just to see what I haven't seen or to app mentions to see any uh, messages that specifically relate to me. So that's how I would go about organizing those. And from a chat perspective, same thing. We, we can't delete a chat thread, but you can hide it. So if I come here to a chat, I have a hide option that doesn't delete the thread. And it really just cleans up your view so you can still find it by searching those keywords or searching the name of that chat and it'll still come back up for you. Uh, so it doesn't fully delete, but you can clean up your view. You can also minimize these to clean it up a bit. Darby, another feature that I like is the ability to save chats that are relevant to you. Mm -hmm. That might be a good one to show. Yeah, absolutely. So let me hop into a perfect. So I'm here in a chat with Nestor. So you can also bookmark and save messages inside of Teams. So what you'll want to do is hover over the message that you would like to save. Maybe it is the document that you don't want to lose or directions you just don't want to lose and select the ellipses. It looks like I already have this saved, so I'll save it and resave here. And I have the option to save this message. When I do that, I see a little notification here in my personal profile. And I have a whole section dedicated to any messages I have saved. And there that document is. That's the message I just saved. So what you notice is it was highlighted in gold there to let me know exactly which message I saved. And then it gave me some context. So that way you don't have a bunch of things saved and you're thinking, why did I save this in the first place? It's going to give you the messages around it to let you know why you may have saved it. Thank you, Darby. Mm -hmm. um, that was great. And also just quickly to that point on your uh, saved messages that could also apply to a context of a, a meeting chat. So as long as you have access to the chat, you can bookmark, you know, a, a note or a document that was shared during a meeting chat as well. 